Hi everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I'm gonna take the camera down just like so. There we go. You should be able to see what I have going on here. So, you know, your jackets are kind of like in a V shape, right? Your shoulders are broad and then your waist gets a little bit smaller. So I just put it on the ironing board and the back side of the ironing board filled out the shoulders and brought it in more narrow for the waist. So it's keeping my, it's keeping my jacket nice and flat. And I really, really like that. Now I don't always tape off my jackets, but I really did want this to stay in this section. So I went ahead and just used painter's tape and I've taped it out. I'm gonna paint my tree first so I know what I'm doing. Um, she gave me the idea, she said she really would like some form of a tree of life. So this is actually gonna be a tree of life. Let's see, let me find a brush that I wanna use for this tree. The tree's pretty big, so actually I'm gonna use one of the Dixie Belle brushes right here. Um, and I am gonna use Stormy Seas, which is a pretty gray blue. And this is gonna make this tree look much more believable and come to life, and then you'll be able to see what exactly, uh, it's kind of like a stained glass look. Have y'all seen this version of the Tree of Life? I thought it would just be beautiful. I really don't need to get a smaller brush for this. I'm just turning it sideways instead and just running it like this. See, the, the fabric is wet, so it's, it's letting me just, see how easily I'm able to move across this denim? All right, so I think I did them all, right? Does that look good? Do I have them all? And these will not just be flat squares uh, or flat shapes filled in. They are gonna have some shadowing and shading in them. Look how good it already looks. What an easy thing this was to do though, right? And I, anyone could do this. There's, there was no pattern. I mean, I just was drawing lines with a marker. Let's do lime green and we'll do it at the bottom. It sort of served the same purpose on the bottom. It sort of acted as if it were light, but with more of a green cast. Let's lay down some pink, which is, you know, by far my favorite color. Let's go for some red. Let's go for this gorgeous, gorgeous, fiery sky. I am gonna put it in the big one right here. Let's add a purple. We'll pull in some of the lavender. There weren't, it, what, there wasn't a lot of lavender. It's very little. So we'll just pull in a couple. I'm doing very, very small amounts of the lavender. The lavender is kind of given a little bit of a pink flare, I feel like. All right, let's add some blue. Let's do the blues and greens before we go. That's gorgeous. We're using it only at the bottom part of the tree. I'll just do a few of these, y'all, and then I'll add a couple of the, the blue green color which is mermaid tail this is a very different type of painting on fabric for me normally i'm using a ton of water i'm doing a lot of blending a lot of movement of the paint and this time i'm not i'm just doing like a paint by number really so i'm using a couple different types of paint i'm using dixie bell's chalk mineral paint um it because that's what i've used for years and i can attest to the fact that it will not wash out. Once you let your paint cure, you need to let it cure for 30 days, or you can heat set it if you need it sooner than that. But I'm also using their silk paint right now, which is what this red is right here, is their silk paint. I'm gonna do this big one in red. You know, when I looked at it, you would think with these colors, you might think of fall, but I didn't. I, it, to me, it looked more like a tree that uh, had sunset sunset light coming through when you work on something real detailed like not real detailed but that has a lot of colors mixed in like this it's helpful if you step away from it for a minute don't stay so close to it you need to kind of sit up take a deep breath look at it and see if a certain section is calling for either light or dark or a specific color Sometimes if you're too close to it and then you step away, you're like, oh crap, what was I thinking? I, I should have probably not put that color there. But you know what, it's just paint. You can always fix it. Getting down to the little bit here. So I'm gonna get a smaller brush. I think I'll be able to paint a little bit faster. This is a makeup brush. Let's get some mermaid tail going. I'm gonna spritz that a little bit. The fibers catch. It's a lot different than painting on wood. It feels a lot different than painting on wood. Um, 
feels different than painting on canvas for sure. All right, so we are done with these colors for right now. So I can move those over. I'm gonna bring these up. These are, that's all. That's what we're working with. What about, we'll do this right here. Yeah, the tree will definitely be darker. Right now, the gray is just a placeholder. Nope. Yep. We'll do a purple. I just made an executive I asked y'all and then I made an executive decision. <laughs> we're almost done and we're almost done. We need that. So I'm gonna activate my, let's do this one. Reactivate my yellow. So that's what I'm gonna do with every single, every single one. Go in and put a second cut on the red and highlight my oranges and yellows and start kind of marrying the colors a little bit. We'll see y'all soon, bye.